5. Then Simon went forth and sought, and he found a resting place for the night for our rabbi, for our rabbi often lodgeth not under a roof, but under the heavens. He that sleepeth without hath the heavens for roof, and he is at home with his father. He that sleepeth under a roof confineth himself within four ells, and hath only himself for guard. And he lodged that night in the booth of a watchman in a vineyard, which was of the possessions of Jochanah, the wife of the rich officer of Herod. And when it was the morning of the second day, and our rabbi had said the, Hear, O Israel, he commanded Simon, his disciple, to open the bundle of bread that we might eat before we began the labor of the day. For on that day the rabbi had much for us to do, and he said, There is much work and little time. The harvests are plenteous, but the harvesters are few. And when Simon had placed bread before us, our rabbi saw the watchman of the vineyard, who stood off afar, and watched what we did, for he was of the men of the earth, who draw not near to rabbis, lest they defile them. But my rabbi said to the watchman of the vineyard, Why standest thou afar off? Approach and sit with us, and eat of our bread. And the watchman answered, How shall I approach and eat of your bread, if you are learned, and I am of the men of the earth? And our rabbi said, It is written, Ye are all children of your Father in heaven. And the watchman answered, Yea, but I am not of the learned. The law is not strong in my hand, and I know not how to observe the commandments of clean and unclean, and my hands will defile the bread. But the rabbi looked at the heavens and said, Behold and see, O my Father in heaven, how they have divided thy children into clean and unclean, pure and impure. And he said unto the watchman, Come, Mattathias, sit down by us and eat our bread, not the learning which is outward lifteth man and maketh him clean, but the learning which is in the heart. Mattathias, thou fulfillest all the law. And the watchman of the vineyard did even so, but with great fear. And when he took in his hand the bread which the rabbi gave him, his eyes were full of tears, and the tears fell on the bread, and he said, Woe is me, rabbi! I know that I shall fall into the nethermost pit, because I have not observed the law, and I know not that which one may do, and that which one may not do. But the rabbi wiped the tears from his eyes and said, I say unto thee, Mattathias, that not thou, but they who complain against thee to our Father in heaven, and speak evil of thee unto him, shall suffer the fires of hell. Thou hast brought thy heart before God, and a humble heart and lowliness of spirit are the most acceptable sacrifices unto him. And he turned unto the city, and lifted up his hands, and he said, Woe unto ye, scribes and Pharisees, who travel over land and sea to win one soul, and when ye have it, ye make it a child of hell. And the rabbi said unto Mattathias the watchman, Lead me abroad in thy garden, for I would delight my eyes with the sight of God's creation. And as the rabbi sat in the vineyard of Jochanah, the wife of Herod's officer, he looked on the green that blossomed from the earth, and the fresh blossoming which was in the buds. For it was the time of the uttermost beauty in the land, which is the spring, and God hath sent forth his Son, his love, and his graciousness over the earth. And the night dew was still on the branches, and the sun gave forth warmth and took away the coldness of the night. And the birds in the branches awakened and were much busied, and they brought food into the nests which were built in the trees. And the garden was filled with life and creation, and it was as though the trees and birds rejoiced to fulfill the commandment of God, to live and have fullness of life, and the joy of peace was poured out on the land, for God had sent peace. 
And when our rabbi perceived the joy and peace which God poured down from heaven, his heart was filled with love toward the earth, toward men and toward all creatures, and he loved and blessed all that created and built. And he took the spade from the hand of Mattathias the watchman, and he helped him in his work. And his heart was filled with gladness that his Father in heaven cared for all his creatures. And he lifted up his voice and taught us in this wise, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he said further, Therefore have no care of your lives, what ye shall eat, or of your bodies, wherein ye shall clothe them. For the life is more precious than food, and the body more precious than raiment. Behold the swallows, and learn of them. They sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, and God nourisheth them. And how much more precious are ye than the birds of the air? Who of you can, by taking thought, add one day unto his life? And if ye cannot create so small a thing, why take ye thought for the rest? Behold the rose, which neither spinneth nor weaveth, and I say unto ye, that Solomon in all his glory was not so arrayed. If God so clothe the grass of the field, which is to day, and to morrow is cast into the oven, how shall he not clothe you, O ye of little faith? Be not so sunk in care what ye shall eat and drink, and be not proud when ye are clothed and fed, for thus do the heathen. Your Father in heaven knoweth your needs. And there came from the road the messengers of the court, and there was one among them whose body was covered with the skin of a camel. And he was lean and withered from fasting and mortifications, so that we beheld the bones of his body. And his hands were like staves for leanness, and his hair was wild and unkempt. And this man was one of the disciples of Yochanan the Baptist, and his name was Zadok. He was a very devout man, and the people believed in him. And they that were with him were the messengers of the court of Nahum. And they came nigh to us, and turned unto the disciples, and not unto the rabbi. And they said, Disciples of Rabbi Yeshua, ye are commanded by the court of justice to appear before it, and to testify concerning the deeds and words of your rabbi. For evil reports have come to the ears of the devout and learned concerning the doctrine and teaching of your rabbi, and ye are responsible even as he is. Then the rabbi said unto us his disciples, Go and appear before the court of justice of Nahum, and testify concerning all that ye have seen and heard. See, I have placed my cause in your hands. Then said Simon Bar-Jonah, who was affrighted by the words of the messengers, Rabbi, I am not learned, and the scriptures are not in my mouth. How shall I dispute with the learned and the scribes? Thou too, Simon Bar-Jonah, shalt go and testify, and that which God, my Father in heaven, shall put into thy mouth, that shalt thou say, for I place my cause in thy hands. And Simon Bar-Jonah came with us, and only the brothers Zebedee remained with my rabbi, for he said that they were choleric, and the words of the learned must needs be listened to in calmness. And the court of the city of Nahum was already assembled, and the head of the court, and the chief men, and the learned, and the interpreters, and with them also many of the disciples of Yochanan the Baptist. And when we, the disciples of Rabbi Yeshua, came before the court, then Simon the Pharisee said unto us, Disciples of the Rabbi, Ye are called before the court of justice, that ye may testify concerning your rabbi what is the doctrine which he preacheth, and the deeds which he performeth. For his deeds are not understandable unto us. He remitteth the sins of the wicked, but it is not known to any of us that flesh and blood can forgive the sins of flesh and blood, and only our Father in heaven can forgive. As it is written, 
and he shall pray unto the Lord, and he shall forgive him. Perchance it be known unto you, scribes, whether there were such among the past generations of the sages and saints as remitted the sins of other men in their own name, and upon what authority they leaned. And Yochanan, the eldest of the scribes, who was learned in the scriptures and a master in the tradition, pulled down the eyebrows which guarded his eyes and answered, It is not known to us, and it hath not been heard, from all the generations of the past, that one man shall remit the sins of another man, which only our Father in heaven can do. And the prophets did no more than call upon the people to repent before the Lord, as it is written, Return, O Israel, unto the Lord thy God. And the Torah giveth reckoning concerning all the sins which a man committeth, whether of set purpose or unwittingly, that he shall bring this and this sacrifice, and confess himself before the Lord. But no man hath the right to forgive the sins of another, save they be the sins which were committed against him. And the head of the court turned unto the disciples of Yochanan the Baptist, and asked, Was it thus with your rabbi, that he forgave you your sins, when ye went unto him to be baptized in the wilderness of Judea? Yochanan the Baptist called us to repent before our Father in heaven, and to purify our bodies with fasts and mortifications, and to do prayer with our bodies by baptism, for the kingdom of heaven was at hand. And Simon the Pharisee lifted up his voice and said, And when we inquired of your rabbi by what authority he remitteth their sins, which none of flesh and blood may do, and was not done even by Moses and the prophets, nor by the oldest of the Hasidians, nor yet by Yochanan the Baptist, then he spoke with harsh words to the learned and the scribes who were assembled there, and he left our company, and went unto the house of Yochanan the tax collector, into which no Jew may enter, for the house of the wicked is unclean. And he exchanged the table of the learned and the scribes for the table of tax collectors, sinful women and men of the earth, whose hands are unclean, for they know not how to act according to the law." and he showed miracles unto them. He exorcised evil spirits and remitted sins, and he spoke with authority as if the law had been delivered into his hands, and he could do therewith as pleased him. The words of your rabbi are not understandable to us, and we have called you before the court of justice. You, the disciples, are responsible for your rabbi as he is for you. And now declare unto us explicitly, Who is he that is your rabbi? Upon what authority doth he lean for his words? And with what power doth he perform wonders? And thus we may know how to deal with him. Then rose Zadok, who was the disciple of Yochanan the Baptist, and his voice was thin and weak, for his body was withered with much fasting and mortification, and he said, Yochanan the Baptist called us into the wilderness, and he bade us mortify our bodies with hunger and thirst, that our souls might be strengthened, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And our bodies were sanctified by baptism, and became worthy dwelling places for the lodgment of our souls. But who is he that eateth and drinketh with sinners? We hear his words, and we behold his deeds, but they are not to be understood, for he goeth not in the footsteps of Yochanan.